the electrics are basically non conducting material they don't have free electrons so they don't they can't conduct electrical effect but still they can transfer electric effect through through induction so we have discussed types of dielectrics there are two types of dielectrics one is polar and another is non polar dielectric see what is polar dielectric in polar dielectric center of positive and negative charge does not coincide if you have a polar dielectric in polar dielectric the center of positive and negative charge in a molecule are at some separation the system will have if positive and negative charge does not coincide that means the system can have a non zero dipole moment this will have a non zero dipole moment the examples include like nacl molecule in nacl molecule the positive charge is on sodium negative charge is on chloride so center of positive and negative charge are does not coincide they are at different position like nacl there is one more example like hcl there is example like h2o so these are examples of polar dielectric so in polar dielectrics center of positive and negative charge and negative charge does not coincide so in polar dielectric the center of positive charge does not coincide with the center of negative charge molecule have some net dipole moment molecule have some net non zero dipole moment so that's polar dielectric examples includes you know sodium chloride hcl h2o these are examples of polar dielectric the next type of dielectrics are non polar dielectric in non polar dielectrics the center of positive charge will coincide with the center of negative charge the positive and negative charge are at the same place center of positive and negative charge coincide with each other if they coincide with each other the examples include o2 molecule h2 molecule in these examples center of positive and negative charges are at one place here center of positive charge coincide with center of negative charge with center of negative dipole moment is zero dipole moment of molecule is zero so this is polar and non polar dielectric so okay note it down the next is uh, polarization the next topic polarization see what is polarization so if you have a molecule जो है ना इज दिस मॉलिक्यूल पोलर और नॉन पोलर द गिवन मॉलिक्यूल इज अ पोलर मॉलिक्यूल और नॉन पोलर मॉलिक्यूल जो है ना हेयर पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव चार्जेस को इन साइड सो जो एग्जांपल ऑफ पोलर और नॉन पोलर मॉलिक्यूल नॉन पोलर इट्स अ नॉन पोलर मॉलिक्यूल ओके द पोलराइजेशन मींस व्हाट द डाइपोल मोमेंट ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल इफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल इज नॉन पोलर देन व्हाट द डाइपोल मोमेंट ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल जो है ना जीरो जीरो polarization means to induce a dipole moment in this molecule if somehow we can induce a dipole moment in this molecule then we'll say the molecule is becomes polar and the process is known as polarization to study polarization we will use some old concepts like if i take an electric field and place a charge in this electric field what would happen with this charge if i place a charge in an electric field joanna what will happen with this charge this charge will experience a force this charge will experience an electric force q the positive charge will experience force in the direction of e the negative charge will experience same force in opposite direction so whenever you place a charge in a field that charge will experience force positive charge is force in the direction of e and negative charge will experience same force but in opposite direction okay, let's start with polarization in polarization we will use a concept of electric field that if i take electric field and this electric field if i place a positive charge this positive charge will experience an electric force in the direction of e if in the same field i place a negative charge this negative charge will experience same force but in opposite direction if i place a positive charge in field this positive charge will experience a force in the direction of e if i place a negative charge in the same field this negative charge will experience same force but in opposite direction so if i take a non polar molecule is a non polar molecule means a molecule having zero dipole moment if i place this molecule in external field 
if i place this molecule in some external field then this electric field will exert force over this molecule it will exert force over positive as well as negative charge this field will exert a force which is fe on the positive charge and a force minus of fe on the negative charge so the field will exert electric force over the charge and due to this electric force this positive and negative charge gets separated molecule develop a non zero dipole moment and this phenomena is known as polarization so in presence of external electric field in presence of external electric field molecule develop a non zero dipole moment non zero dipole moment known as polarization this is known as polarization so whenever you place a molecule in some external field that molecule will develop a dipole moment this phenomena is known as polarization of molecule that's polarization if i keep on increasing the strength of electric field then this forces this positive and negative forces will keep on increasing and for a particular value of electric field your molecule will break down and this is known as dielectric breakdown this is known as dielectric breakdown and dielectric strength this is known as dielectric breakdown and dielectric strength so if i place a molecule in some external electric field then electric field will exert force over the molecule due to this force this molecules stretch like so if this is the molecule i place an external field over this molecule the positive charge the field will push this positive charge in this direction and field will exert force over negative charge in opposite direction if i keep on increasing the value of electric field at a particular value of field this molecule gets break down it get breaks down into positive and negative charge this is known as dielectric breakdown this is known as dielectric breakdown and the value of electric field at which a dielectric breaks down this value is known as dielectric strength so we can write this definition as when a dielectric is placed in a very high electric field electric field it's positive it can break into positive and negative ion this is known as breakdown this phenomena is dielectric breakdown so if you apply an external electric field to a dielectric molecule then positive and negative charges will experience forces in opposite direction stretch will keep on increasing and at a point at a value of field dielectric breaks down that's known as dielectric strength i'm writing the definition of dielectric strength so maximum value of electric field that can be applied to a dielectric without its breakdown without its breakdown is dielectric strength breakdown is dielectric strength that's dielectric strength okay just tell me one more thing after breakdown breakdown means your dielectric breaks into positive and negative ions after breakdown your dielectric is conducting or non conducting although dielectric is a non conducting medium but i'm asking what about after breakdown after breakdown your dielectric will remain non conducting or it will be it should become conducting yes it should become conducting because ions are conducting so always remember this thing after breakdown dielectric can conduct like air is a dielectric medium so it's non conducting but if you apply strong electric field to air a electric field of the value 3 into 10 raised to the power 5 then your air will become conducting it can leak 
charges in air. The next topic is capacitance. First, let's study capacitance, then we'll do capacitance. The next is capacitance. So, capacitance simply means charge holding capacity of a conductor. Capacitance simply means it's charge holding capacity of a conductor. The charge holding capacity of a conductor is known as capacitance. A conductor having greater capacitance can hold more amount of charge, greater amount of charge. So if you have a conductor and you're supplying some charge to this conductor, its potential will keep on rising. If you keep on providing charge to the conductor, its potential keep on rising. So you can say that charge on the conductor is directly proportional to capacitance. So it's directly proportional to potential. You keep on adding charge on the conductor, its potential keep on increasing. When you remove the sign of proportionality, you will get a constant C. This constant C is known as capacitance. And this capacitance will control the charge, its charge holding capacity. A conductor having greater capacitance can store greater amount of charge. So from this equation, you can write that your C is Q by V. This is the expression of C, capacitance. Joanna, can you guess its SI unit? What is SI unit of charge? Coulomb. Coulomb. What about V, volt, uh, potential? Joanna, SI unit of potential V. Volt. Volt. So here Q is charge and V is potential. So it's Coulomb divided by volt. So it should be Coulomb volt inverse. That's Coulomb volt inverse SI unit which is known as Farad. Coulomb volt inverse, which is Farad. But Farad is a very big unit. A capacitance of one Farad is a very, very large unit. Usually in calculation, you use comparative smaller unit like millifarad. One millifarad means 10 raised to the power minus three Farad. Or you could use microfarad. Microfarad means 10 raised to the power minus six Farad. Or you can use picofarad. Pico means 10 raised to the power minus 12 farad. Or you can use nano farad. Nano farad means 10 raised to the power minus 5. The next is, this capacitance is independent. Capacitance is independent of charge and potential. It's independent of charge and potential. But when you, look, when you look at this particular equation, it seems that capacity is directly proportional to charge. Yeah, it's nanofarad, yeah, it's nanofarad. When you look, look at this equation, it seems that capacity is directly proportional to charge and this is inversely proportional to potential. But exactly this potential too depends upon charge. So that charge and charge gets canceled out. So your capacity is independent of charge as well as potential. It depends only on geometry. It depends only on geometry. It depends only on geometry. It depends only over the geometry of conductor. Nothing else. Only on the geometry. So if I take, if I plot a graph, charge versus potential graph. I'm taking charge on the x-axis and potential on the y-axis. Just by looking at this equation, Afroza, can you guess the nature of graph? It would be straight line, parabolic, hyperbolic. Just by looking at this equation, can you guess the nature of the graph? Straight line, parabolic, circular, hyperbolic. So, Fatma, can you guess the nature of the graph? Q versus B graph? Yes, it would be straight line. Afroza, if equation is linear, see, Q, the power of Q is 1, V is 1, equation is linear. It's just the graph would be a straight line. It would be a straight line graph. Graph would be a straight line. If I calculate the slope of this graph, let's say this angle is theta. If I make a right angle triangle here, then this perpendicular is parallel to V. This base is parallel to Q. So you can write that your slope, which is equal to tan theta, is V by Q. And see, what is V by Q? V by Q is 1 by C. The slope will be 1 by C now. Is it clear? You know slope, huh? You all know what is slope, right? Yeah, Joanna, see. 
from this equation it seems that capacity depends upon charge as well as potential but this potential itself depends upon charge if you consider the case of a point charge then your potential is q by 4 pi epsilon not r so this charge gets cancelled out with charge and the term which remains this 4 pi epsilon not r it's neither charge nor potential it's simple geometry that's why we say that it depends only on geometry and nature of surrounding medium you will get the proof of this statement throughout this chapter capacitors in every calculation you will see that capacity comes out to be independent of q so the slope is 1 by c okay if i just flip the axis joanna now can you guess the slope if i just flip the axis like this is my q and this is b can you guess what is the value of slope now joanna it will be negative it will be negative not negative Won't be negative. Slope is tan theta. Now this perpendicular is parallel to Q and base is parallel to B. So tan theta is perpendicular upon base. Tan theta is Q by B and Q by B is C. It's tan theta which is Q by C. This Q by B is C. So now slope will be one by not one by C. Your slope will be B. Just note it down. Then we'll do some more graphs. Okay. The next is. Uh, This is Q and this is C. C versus Q graph. Now, since your capacitance is absolutely independent of charge, so the nature of graph is a straight line, it's parallel to Q. You keep on changing charge, capacity will not change. Similarly, if I ask you to plot C versus B graph, capacitance is independent of potential. You keep on changing potential, capacity should not change. So again, your graph will be a straight line, parallel. Keep on changing your potential, capacity will not. So these are some important graphs. Okay, after these graphs, just the next is capacitance of a spherical conductor. Okay, do one thing. Just note these two graphs. I need more space. Capacitance of a spherical conductor. Capacitance of a spherical conductor. So you have a sphere, a spherical conductor. It could be hollow or solid. Because if you have a conductor, then charge will reside only on the outer surface. Nothing else. If you have a conductor, charge will reside only on the outer surface. The charge is Q. Radius of the conductor is capital R. So charge Q is uniformly distributed, uniformly distributed on the surface of conductor. On the surface of conductor. Of radius r, so charge Q is uniformly distributed on the surface of a conductor. The radius of the conductor is r. You're supposed to calculate potential on the surface of conductor. Potential on surface of conductor. So Fatma, what is the expression for potential on the surface of conductor? We did this in the last class. Potential on the surface of conductor V. Fatma. Not P sin theta. I'm asking potential, not potential energy. Potential. Afroza, what is potential expression of potential on the surface of a conductor? Spherical conductor. Yes, K Q by R. Potential on the surface of spherical conductor is four pi epsilon naught q by capital R. This is what we did in the last class, right? Q by four pi epsilon naught capital R. Then you can write your capacitance. C is the ratio of charge and potential. Is the ratio of charge Q and potential four pi epsilon naught R. This Q gets cancelled out with this Q, and you are left with only four pi epsilon. So this is the capacitance of a sphere, spherical conductor. So see, capacity depends only over epsilon naught, which basically depends on medium, and capital R, which is the radius of the sphere. So again, your capacity is independent of charge and potential. Using this expression, you can calculate the capacity of Earth, the capacitance of Earth. See, Earth is conducting, and we can consider Earth as almost a perfect sphere. So if we consider Earth as a sphere, sir, I have a doubt. Yes. Yeah, if a conductor does not have any charge inside, so 
why do we need to calculate capacitance because while calculating calculating charge which is on the surface of conductor capacity doesn't mean that charge is inside the conductor if the charge is distributed on the surface of conductor then too we are calculating capacity at how much charge can be given to the surface of conductor if you try to give charge beyond that capacity then this charge will simply lead to the noise it will simply lead to the noise so capacity doesn't mean that we are placing charge inside the conductor we are just placing charge on the surface of conductor and one more interesting thing this this leakage uh, okay we will we will discuss this leakage in a while this just let me complete this topic then we will discuss what do you mean by leakage of charge usually students have misconception that leakage of charge is just like leakage of water from a container isn't it you think that capacity of a conductor is like capacity of a container if i'm asking if i'm saying that charge leak from a conductor you think that the, the leakage of charge is just like the leakage of water from a container the way water leak from a container is same as the charge leak from a conductor these are two different concepts totally different concepts we will discuss the leakage of charge in a while although that's not a part of your syllabus we will discuss it let me just finish this one so if we consider earth as a sphere then capacitance of earth capacitance of earth c earth can be written as 4 pi epsilon naught r earth so how much is the radius of earth you can calculate its numerical value what is the radius of earth what is the radius of earth radius of earth is 6.4 into 10 raised to the power 6 meter that is the radius of earth if i solve this thing so we will get that capacity of earth is 711 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad so the capacity of earth comes out to be 711 mi if i consider a conductor of the size of earth like i am considering the earth as a conductor then the capacity of the whole earth is 711 microfarad this is 711 microfarad okay let's discuss leakage of charge from a conductor although it's not a part of your syllabus i wanted to skip this topic but okay let's discuss leakage of charge from a conductor before leakage of charge let's discuss what do you mean by leakage of water from a container let's say i take a container a container of some volume 2 liter i keep on adding water into that container once this container gets filled means this container has stored 2 liter of water if i try to adding some more water to the container then it will start leaking this is leakage of water from a container so you think that charge will leak in the same manner aproza fatma johana you think that charge will leak in the same manner see charge is not a particle unlike water unlike fluid charge is not a particle charge is a property see filling a container with water and filling a contain conductor with charge are two different things water is a particle it's something that you can store charge is just a property electron is not charge electron is a particle which have a negative charge so charge is just a property so what do you mean by leakage of charge the leakage of charge you can understand leakage of charge using dielectric breakdown let's say i consider a conductor it's a conductor and this is air around this conductor i provide some charge let's say a charge of 10 coulomb to this conductor can this charge conduct to air is it possible that air carries this charge with itself can charge conduct this air to different place yes or no is it possible that air starts conducting this charge no because air is dielectric air is non conducting air cannot carry this charge from one point to another air is non conductor so charge since air cannot carry this charge so we say that charge does not leak from the surface of conductor but if you provide charge to a conductor then this conductor will generate some electric field the strength of electric field will keep on increasing with the value of charge if you keep on increasing the charge the value of this electric field will increase say this is an air molecule this electric field will exert a force on air molecule johanna what will happen if electric field exert force on air molecule see this is a conductor you are providing charge to a conductor this conductor will generate some electric field you keep on increasing the charge on the conductor the strength of electric field will increase so 
what will happen if this electric field interact with the air molecule what this field can do with air molecule jo hai na this field if we go back to that topic of dielectric breakdown this field will exert air can conduct this this electric field will exert force on air molecules if i keep on increasing so the force will be like positive charge will experience force in the direction of field negative charge will experience same force but in opposite direction if you keep on increasing the strength of electric field the magnitude of this force will increase and at a very value of field which is known as dielectric strength if you provide sufficient charge to the conductor so that electric field is strong enough and is equal to dielectric strength of air then this air will break down once this air breaks down it becomes conducting and this conducting air will start transferring charge from the surface of conductor will start transferring charge from the surface of conductor and you would say that charge is leaking this is leakage of charge so charge leak charge leak due to dielectric breakdown breakdown of surrounding medium i'm repeating it again you take a conductor you provide some charge to the conductor this charge will generate some electric field that electric field will exert force on the surrounding medium if you keep on increasing the charge the strength of electric field will increase and at a value of electric field which is known as dielectric strength the surrounding medium gets break down once your surrounding medium break down it becomes conducting and if it becomes conducting then will start taking charge from the surface of conductor this is the leakage of charge basically unlike water is nothing like was a container even filling water into it gets filled and it overflows it's due to dielectric breakdown of surrounding is it clear this concept of leakage of charge of rosa fatma joena just note it down then move on to next one this is how charge leak from the surface of conductor see the capacity of a conductor is very limited the capacitance of a conductor is very much limited you can't provide a charge beyond a certain value if, if you even you take a con conductor of the size of the earth its capacity is still in microfarad its capacity will be 700 microfarad so if you needs a device or something which can store greater amount of charge means you need a device having capacity of some 1 ml just a second the capacity of entire earth is 711 microfarad so if you take a conductor of the size of all this capacity is just 711 micro but if i ask you to make a device having conductor of capacity of 1 ml 1 ml means almost 1000 times that of the capacity of earth then obviously you can't take a conductor bigger than earth so make a device a device which can store a very large amount of charge and that device is known as capacitor the flashlight of your camera the flashlight of your camera have a capacitor that store a very strong amount of charge when you press the button that flash of light is basically the charge stored in the capacitor that charge stored in the capacitor comes in the form of flash of light so that small camera the flashlight in your mobile phone its capacity is almost same as that of the capacity of earth so a conductor have a very limited capacity so we use capacitor we make device known as capacitor and these device can store comparative larger amount of charge so capacitor it is a device used to store charge a very small capacitor a capacitor of the size of the flashlight of your camera or the size of your camera can store charge almost equal to that of entire so there's difference between capacitance and capacitor capacitance is the property charge holding capacity of a conductor and capacitor is a device which can store charge so the device used to store charge so how to make a capacitor a capacitor consists of a capacitor consists of two oppositely charged conductors charge conductors separated by dielectric medium so capacitor is simply a device which can store a very large amount of charge it consists of two conductors both the conductors should have opposite charge and that should they should be separated by a dielectric medium for example so this is first conductor this is second conductor the first one is positively charged the second one is negative charged and the medium between them should be dielectric if you place a conducting medium between these two conductors it will be a simply a piece of conductor a piece of metal it won't be a capacitor 
it will be a capacitor only if the space between the conductors is filled with a dielectric field. Now, depending upon the shape and size of these conductors, you have various types of capacitors. Depending on shape and size of conductor, we have three types of capacitor. The first one is parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plate capacitor. The second one is spherical capacitor. And the third one is cylindrical capacitor. In each of these capacitors, the two conductors have different shapes. In parallel plate capacitor, two conductors are basically two plates, one over the other. This plate should be rectangle, square, triangular, disc, but these are two plates. In spherical capacitor, your two conductors are two spheres, basically. Two conducting spheres will form a spherical capacitor. Similarly, in a cylindrical capacitor, you have two conducting cylinders. The cylindrical capacitor is not a part of this labor, so we'll do only parallel plate capacitor and spherical capacitor. This is the symbol of capacitor. This is the symbol of the process. See. Or some authors will draw a capacitor using in this way. This also represents a capacitor. Okay, just note, note it down. So the difference between capacitance and capacitor is clear. Don't confuse between capacitance and capacitor. Capacitance is the property, and capacitor is a device. Okay, have you heard about any other device which can store a very large amount of charge? Air is in capacitor. Have you ever came across a device which can store a large, comparative large amount of charge? What does cell do? No, no, Froza. Not generator. Not charger. Cell. Is a charger charge a cell? Huh? A cell can store amount of charge. So what's the difference between a cell and a capacitor? Both are storing charge. A cell is stored charge. Cell have electrodes, a positive electrode and a negative electrode. A cell stores some charge over those electrodes. So what's the difference between cell and capacitor? The difference between cell and capacitor is in the mode of discharging. A cell discharge gradually. If you if you have bulb or LCD light <coughs> in your room, that LCD light, the light coming from that LCD is constant. Its intensity is not variable. If you take a tube light, its intensity of light from that tube light is pretty constant. It's, it doesn't vary. So when a cell discharge, it discharges gradually. A cell can maintain a constant supply of current. It discharges very gradually. But instead of cell, a capacitor discharges in fractions of a second. The example of capacitor is uh, the flashlight of camera. The flashlight of camera is not a regular light. It's just a flash of light. It's flash for a fraction of a second and then it goes off. So a capacitor discharge in fractions of seconds. Capacitor discharge in a fractions of seconds. But a cell discharge gradually, it takes time to discharge. So that's the difference between a cell and a capacitor. So is it clear up to this uh, capacitor? And we have to do some three to four derivations on capacitor. So this capacitance and capacitor is clear. Because whatever we will do now from now onwards is based on based on the topics that we have discussed in the last, last half an hour. Is, so then what about the torch in our phone? That torch is due to cell. The cell in your mobile phone control that torch in your phone. It's due to cell or battery. That's why it's, it's a constant stream of light. But that flashlight is not controlled by cell. It's basically controlled by capacitor. That's why it's just a flash. Let's see, parallel plate capacitor. The next is parallel. Achha. For the next four or five calculations, I will use some topics from chapter number one as well as chapter number two. So the first topic that I will use is electric field due to a plane sheet. Electric field due to plane sheet. So the expression of electric field due to a plane sheet is sigma by two epsilon. This is electric field due to a plane sheet. Sigma, a surface charge density, which is charge divided by area. Third, we can write electric field as gradient of potential. It's dV over dr. Or for uniform field, you can write this as E is minus of delta V over delta. I will use these three topics in the next four calculations. You can note it down if you don't remember this. You, know, you need these three topics in the next four, four or five calculations. 
The next is parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plate capacitor with air between the plates. So a parallel plate capacitor with air between the plates. So you have two plates. Yes, air is dielectric. Yes, air is dielectric. You have two plates of area A and separation between the plate is D. So A is area of each plate. A is area of each plate. And D is separation between plates. And D is separation between plates. See, these plates are not just line. These are not just wire. They're basically rectangular sheets. So right now, you, you, you are seeing only the top view of the sheet. These sheets are in this way. When I'm drawing it, you, you are viewing only the top view, this top view. Only the top view is visible. Otherwise, these plates are of this shape. The plate area is A, area of each plate is A, and the separation between the plates is D. And D is the separation between the plates. Area of each plate is A, and separation between the plates is small. So for being a capacitor, both the conducting plate should have opposite charge. This plate have a positive charge of plus sigma and this plate have a negative charge of minus. Sigma. The next step is you have to calculate electric field between the plates. Electric field between the plates. So Fatma, what is the direction of field over this point due to this positive plate? Direction of electric field at this point due to positive plate. Is it downwards or upwards? Upwards. Upwards. Okay. Afroza, due to this positive plate, direction of field over this point. Is it downwards or upwards? The direction of field, yes, Afroza is correct, Fatma. The direction of field due to a positive charge is away from the charge, right? So this is positive charge. So direction of field is away from the charge. Joanna, this is how we decide the direction of electric field. If you have a positive charge, then direction of electric field is away from the charge. If you have a negative charge, then direction of field is towards the charge. So this is the direction of fields due to positive as well as negative charge. So in between the plates, your electric field E is, see both positive and negative are acting in same direction, so you can simply add them up. For a positive charge, direction of field is away from the charge. For a negative charge, direction of field is towards the charge. Next, you can write this as E plus and E minus are acting in same directions. So it's simply E plus plus E minus. You can simply add them up algebraically. See here, this E plus is electric field due to this positive sheet. For a sheet, expression of electric field is sigma by 2 epsilon. For negative, the charge density is same. It's again sigma by 2 epsilon. We are considering the magnitude of field. While considering magnitude, we don't consider the negative charge, negative sign of the charge. So it's sigma by 2 epsilon naught plus sigma by 2 epsilon naught. So net field between the plates is sigma by epsilon. In the next step, you can just substitute the value of sigma. You can simply write your sigma as q by a. If I substitute the value of sigma here, the expression of field will comes out to be q over a epsilon. That is equation number one. So in all derivations, in all calculations of capacitance, the first step is common. First of all, you have to calculate the electric field between the plates. Next, you have to calculate potential difference. Say, this plate is positively charged. This plate is negatively charged. So there is a potential difference in between the plates. So potential difference between the plates is V. Potential difference between plates is V. This is the value of potential difference between the plates. You can relate electric field and potential difference in this way. E is minus of delta V over delta R. This negative sign gives the direction of field, but right now we are just interested in magnitude. Fatma, what is the value of delta V here? What is potential difference between the plates? Fatma, what is the potential difference, value of potential difference between the plates? Delta V. What's the value of potential difference between the plates? Right. See, this, this, this V, 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 V is the potential difference. Huh? This is V. Okay, Fatma, what is the separation between the plates, delta R? D. Yes, the separation between the plates is D. 
So if I substitute all these values here, if I substitute all these values here, then your electric field will comes out to be V by D only. I'm eliminating this negative sign because this negative sign gives direction. I don't need direction here. So you can simply write this as V is E D. This is equation number two. If I substitute one into your V comes out to be it's Q by A epsilon naught into D. That's equation number three. Johanna, what is that formula for capacitance? Johanna. Q by V. It's Q by V. So you can substitute the value of V from his third equation. If I substitute three and four, then capacity will be it's Q by V, where V is Q over A epsilon naught into D. This Q gets cancelled out with this Q. This is epsilon naught A by D. So this is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. See, this is again depends only over geometry. A and D are geometry. Epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity. Is it clear? Any doubt in this calculation? Sir, I missed the part where you said why um, this electric field of positive and negative are the same. Direction. Okay. See, the electric field due to positive charge is away from the charge. That's why it's acting in downwards direction. And due to this negative charge, the direction of field is towards the charge. Again, acting in downwards direction. Now, since both the fields are acting in same direction, so you can simply add them up. The net field will be vector sum of e plus and e minus. But since e plus and e minus are in same direction, so we don't need to apply parallelogram law. We can just simply directly add them. So I'm adding e plus and e minus algebraically. It can be added algebraically only if these two are acting in same direction. Then I substituted the values of sigma by two epsilon naught, sigma by two epsilon naught. The field is sigma by epsilon. There are four derivations on parallel plate capacitor. The steps are more or less same. What was that? Can I raise it? Same derivation. I'm just making a very small change that instead of air in between the plates, we have a dielectric slab. Although air is a dielectric, but dielectric constant of air is one. So I'm taking a dielectric else than air. Say I can put paper in between the plates of capacitor. Can you guess where the calculation calculations will change? This is an open question for all. Can you just guess where the calculations will change? Instead of air, I put a dielectric. Very good. Epsilon naught. Very good. So instead of epsilon naught, I will use dielectric constant. Say K is dielectric constant. K is dielectric constant of medium between plates. K is the dielectric constant of the medium in between the plates. So instead of air, you have some medium, a medium having dielectric constant K. So I should. So in between the plates of capacitor, I place the medium. The dielectric constant of the medium is K. The dielectric constant is K. So the field is downwards. That's E positive. Field is downwards. That's E negative. The dielectric medium between the plates have a dielectric constant K. So so the only difference would be instead of two epsilon naught, you will use k. K epsilon. So it will be two k epsilon naught. Whenever you have medium other than free space, just just multiply epsilon naught with k. So it will be k epsilon. Naught. Your sigma is q by a, so this will be a k epsilon naught. Here again, this will be a k epsilon. Naught. So the only difference in the calculation is this k. A k epsilon, so that will be k epsilon not divided, and k is greater than one. So if I com compare this C with that of air, so in air it was epsilon not divided in medium. This is k epsilon not divided. So capacity increases in medium. So capacity increases in medium. I don't have much space here, so I'm writing it here. C medium is greater than C. Air. So if you place a medium having dielectric constant k in between the plates of capacitor, then capacity will increase. It simply becomes k times. So if you place a medium having dielectric constant 20, your capacity will become 20 times. If you place a medium having dielectric constant 1000, then your capacity will become 1000. In the third calculation, we are again placing the dielectric, but not fully. We are placing the dielectric partial parallel plate capacitor with dielectric slab, dielectric slab partially filled filled between plates. So these are two plates, a plate having area A and separation D. 
and in between the plates we have placed this dielectric slab of dielectric constant k slab of constant k and thickness k so this is dielectric and this is air so i have placed this dielectric partially between the plates so t is the thickness of the slab thickness of slab and here t is less than b the thickness of the slab is less than the separation between them in air the strength of electric field is e not and in dielectric the strength of electric field is e so e not is electric field in air the total separation of the plates is d out of this d in separation t we have dielectric so this air is in in region d minus so the total separation between the plates is d in separation t you have dielectric so you have air in separation d minus then you have e e is strength of electric field in medium or electric field in dielectric in region okay what is the value of e not what is value of electric field in air jo hai na now we will use result that we have calculated in the last two last two sections what is the value of e not here Value of e not is sigma over epsilon, and e is sigma over k epsilon. And see how we have calculated potential difference in the last two calculations. Potential difference we have always calculated potential difference as product of electric field and separation. So potential difference between the plates. No, Fatma. Two epsilon naught was for a single plate, but for the complete capacitor, it was always epsilon. Naught. Sigma by two epsilon naught was for a single sheet, but we are taking field for the entire capacitor, which is sigma by two epsilon naught plus sigma by two epsilon naught, which is sigma by epsilon, right? Yes. Next is potential between plates, or specifically potential difference between. you can calculate potential difference by just multiplying field with the separation e not is in separation d minus t and your field e is in separation t this is equation number 3 just substitute equation number 1 and 2 and 3 and get the value of c calculate c now and report your answer in chat i will not calculate further The substitute the values, put value of sigma, take value of c as q by v, and report your answer in chat. I need net capacity. Answers? Yeah, word of answer for me. No, but my capacitance in capacitance you can't have sigma. Na? You will first substitute sigma in terms of q, then you will take ratio of q by v so that q gets cancelled out. Instead of writing, you can even dictate your final results. Instead of typing, you can just dictate your final result. Afroza, Joanna. Are you calculating or should I calculate it? Yes, sir, calculating. Good luck. Fatma, mm -hmm. just put the value of sigma. Then put sigma is q by a. Then take ratio with q. Sir, is it a by sigma zero? This is a d by sigma zero k. Absolute not zero. Yes, sir. No. 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 See. If I substitute these values, you know, values of E naught and E here, so this will be E naught is sigma by epsilon naught d minus t. E is sigma over k epsilon naught in. In the next step, you can take this sigma by epsilon naught as constant. It's d minus t. This is t plus t by t. in the next step you can write this sigma as the ratio of charge in area this is what we have done in the last two calculations the substitute sigma as charge upon area if i substitute the sigma to be charge upon area then this comes out to be c is q by a epsilon naught d minus t plus t by k this is your c once you have c get the value of so not c this is This is potential. 
this is potential difference this is potential this is potential difference next we can calculate capacitance capacitance is the ratio of charge and potential difference so capacitance is the ratio of charge q and potential difference which is q by a epsilon naught d minus t plus t by k this q will cancel this q and your capacity comes out to be epsilon naught a over d minus t plus e by this is the expression of capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor if a dielectric slab is introduced partially you can do one more thing in denominator you can just take this t as common and you are left with just 1 minus 1 by this is again joana can you compare this capacitance with that of parallel plate capacitor having air this is epsilon naught a by d when the when the medium between the plates of capacitor is here then the capacitance is epsilon naught a by d can you compare this result with c here this c is greater than c or less than c or equal to c here joana c okay. air is more c air is more okay padma can you compare c and c air this is c air epsilon naught a over d minus t1 minus 1 by k and this is c air which is epsilon naught a by d which one is greater um c no c c air is less c air is less why is it less um because t into 1 minus 1 by k is being subtracted from the denominator hmm C is greater. The numerator in both the cases is same, but here in C air your denominator is d, but for C with dielectric your denominator is d minus d. So subtracting something from the denominator. If denominator decreases, then overall function increases. Like out of two by three and two by five, two by three is greater because the denominator is smaller. So you can say that C is greater than C air. So if you introduce a dielectric slab partially, then again your capacity will increase is it clear yes sir okay this is noted down is one more calculation with parallel plate capacitor the next is instead of dielectric slab we can substitute place a conducting slab here see what will happen if instead of dielectric slab i substitute a conducting slab so instead of dielectric slab let's have a conducting slab so johanna what is net field inside a conductor This will zero. Yes, it's a conductor. So in a conductor, net field is zero. In a conductor, net field is zero. Right? So it's a conductor. Inside the conductor, net electric field is zero. So this E here is zero. Just solve this calculation, and I need final result. Please don't make any mistake now. The same calculation instead of E, just substitute zero. Calculate capacity. Net capacitance and report your answer in chat. No, Fatma, only E will be zero. Na, there is still some electric field in air, which is in the region D minus T. Sir, E zero and E is same. E zero and no, no, E zero okay. is field within air, inside air. So E zero is sigma by epsilon, but E is electric field inside the conductor, which is zero. So they are different. So here, this E not is sigma by epsilon, and E is zero, right? Only electric field inside the conductor is zero, not the total field. Calculate total capacitance. So if I quickly substitute the values, your V will be if sigma by epsilon naught d minus t plus zero. So V is simply Q over a epsilon naught d minus. Next, you can calculate C. Huh? Now capacitance C will be is the ratio of Q by V. So it's Q by Q by a epsilon or d minus. Gets cancelled out. So capacity is epsilon or a over d minus. This capacitance is again greater than capacity of air. So whatever you do, you you can substitute a uh, dielectric fully between the plates, or you can place your dielectric partially, or you can put a conducting slab inside your capacitor. In all cases. Capacity will be greater than that of free space. So can I raise it now? You all were correct. The next is what if you have a number of dielectrics for n dielectrics? So this is your parallel plate capacitor, 
and in this between the plates you placed number of dielectrics this is first dielectric you place second dielectric you place nth dielectric so i placed n number of dielectrics this is k1 dielectric constant k2 dielectric constant k thickness is t1 thickness is t2 thickness is t n the area of the plate is a the separation between the plates is t. so the formula which we have derived like epsilon not a by d minus t plus t by k we will just generalize this instead of t i will write t1 plus t2 up to t n t by k so it will be t1 by k1 t2 by k2 t n by k so this is the capacitance so i'll not a by t minus t1 plus t2 plus t n t1 by k1 t2 by k2 up to t n by k so this is the capacity of parallel plate capacitor if you have n dielectric this noted down only one last calculation on spherical capacitor then we will do numericals joanna can i raise it Sir, I'm having a doubt. Okay. Yes. Why? Uh, yeah. Why are we adding T1 by K1 plus T2 by K2? Right. Why deriving this uh, parallel plate capacitor with a single dielectric slab, partially filled? We got this result, right? Epsilon not A by D minus T plus T by K. So this we did in the last to last section. A uh, parallel plate capacitor with a dielectric slab partially filled, right? Yeah. So if instead of a single slab, you have a number of slabs. So instead of this T, if we derive, you will get T1, sum of T1, T2, T n, all slabs. Similarly, earlier you have just one dielectric slab, so you're getting T by K. But when you have n slabs, then you will get this T by K for each slab. You get one T1 by K1 for this slab, K2, T2 by K2 for this slab, T n by K n for this slab. That's why I'm adding it up. If you want exact derivation, then you can derive it in this way, like. We have write two fields, na sigma e naught, which is sigma by epsilon naught. Then I wrote this e, which is sigma by k epsilon naught. You will write this as k one epsilon. You can write this as e one. You can write this as e two. Then you can have e three, which is sigma by k three epsilon naught or k two epsilon. For putting, you can just multiply field with separation. It will be like sigma by epsilon naught into d minus. If the total separation is d. And thickness of each dielectric is T1, T2, Tn. So the air, the separation left for air is T minus T1 plus T2 plus Tn, right? The whole separation is D. Dielectrics are in thickness T1 plus T2 plus Tn. So air is in separation by T minus T1 plus T2 plus Tn. So you multiply it with T minus T1 plus T2 plus. Tn. So this is all these terms will arise. You do n dielectrics. Joanna. Yes, sir. Okay, so got it. So the next is. Parallel plate capacitor is over. We will do numericals after uh, deriving formula of energy. After parallel plate capacitor, the next thing we have is spherical capacitor. This is spherical capacitor is not given in theory in NCERT, but NCERT have given a numerical when you are asked to derive the expression of spherical capacitor. So I am solving that numerical. So spherical capacitor we consists of two conducting spheres. It consists of two conducting spheres. First is sphere of radius a. And the outer sphere of radius. We place a charge Q on the surface of first sphere. A minus Q charge will induce due to this plus Q. A negative charge will get induced on the surface of inner sphere. A charge plus Q will induce on the surface of outer. Sphere. But we have altered the outer conductor because we need just equal and opposite charges. We need a charge plus Q and a charge minus Q. We don't need this positive Q charge. Because for a capacitor, you need two conductors which are oppositely charged. So I need a conductor having charge plus Q and another with charge minus. I don't need this plus Q. So to remove this plus Q, I just altered this conductor. So now you have two conductors: an inner sphere having charge Q and an outer sphere having charge minus. Is it clear? Yes. Next, you need potential difference between inner and outer sphere. Potential difference between inner and outer sphere. Inner and outer. So the potential difference between the spheres is just subtract the potential of two spheres. So it's Q over four pi epsilon naught a minus Q over four pi epsilon naught b. 
you can even derive this result using first calculate field which is k q by r then you can calculate potential difference by integrating the field but since we have done potential difference in the last section that potential on the surface of sphere is this i'm using the direct results it's q by 4 pi you can take q by 4 pi epsilon not as common and you are left with just 1 pi minus 1 pi just note it down and calculate the capacity you know that capacity is the ratio of q by v note it down and complete this calculation report your final answer in chat this calculate capacity the formula is same it's q by v just substitute the value of v and get it now from the there is only one single charge not two charges see c is simply q by v is only one charge q so it's q by q by 4 pi epsilon not it's 1 by a minus 1 by b you can cancel this q with this q 4 pi epsilon not will be in numerator this is 1 by a minus 1 by b next you can take lcm 4 pi epsilon not You can take this A B as LCM, so you are left with just B minus A. This A B will come to this side, and C will be four pi epsilon naught A B over B minus A. So this is the capacitance of spherical capacitor. Is it clear now, Padma, Rosa, Joanna? So this is about the capacitance of types of capacitor: parallel plate capacitor and spherical capacitor.